Morning. Now, for the next hour and 21 minutes, we have Joel Skousen as our guest, editor of World Affairs Brief. Uh, and we've got a lot of key points to cover with him. But before we go there, I want to get your take on the North Africa situation, uh, the Middle East unrest, what's behind that. Now the West admits they've been stirring it up in Syria, Libya, many other areas. Uh, not that we're fans of these dictators, but the point is, from my re uh, intel, this is staged and it's pretty much admitted now. Al-Qaeda is admitted in uh, BBC, CNN, London Telegraph to be funded by the West in the east of Libya. Incredible. They're now saying it isn't a war. Uh, it's a kinetic um, uh, military operation, so the Orwellian stuff is really spreading. And then I want to get into Fukushima and your view on how serious this cover-up is. And the whole next hour, uh, Mr. Skousen, will be you with the floor with a PowerPoint presentation as you speak for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers. The listeners can later see it uploaded to the web, uh, regular listeners, uh, as you go through strategic relocation and your deep research. But great to have you with us. On that first point, though, do you agree that the understanding of the true global paradigm is accelerating? We now have an expanding remnant who can go out and educate others. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, there's a tremendous uh, wave of... Uh of increased understanding, and uh, a lot of it, to, in fact, I would say that most of it is due to your efforts on Infowars.com and this program. Uh, Coast to Coast is also coming around. I was interviewed uh, just a few days ago uh, with George Norrie, and he said, you know, I used to be really skeptical, Joel, about uh, what you'd said about a future threat of the New World Order and an attack from Russia and China and other things, but boy, he says, I just find your arguments are impressive and uh, uh, I just got an overwhelming response also from listeners saying, you know, thank goodness, you know, somebody's finally coming around to this stuff. So, yes, we're on a wave, and believe me, it's going to mean there's going to be a larger counterattack from the establishment. They're not going to take this lying down. They're attacking you now, as you know. Uh, they're going to be attacking Glenn Beck uh, uh, more. Uh, even George Norrie could be attacked. But uh, anyway, this is an exciting time to be in. It certainly is. Uh, let's. Do you want to go through your view on the unfolding Fukushima situation first? Right, let me start with. Uh, let me start with Libya, if I can. Go you ahead. Know, this, this is an incredible. It's a usual pattern, but it's an incredible pattern of U.S. globalist leaders, whether Republican or Democrat, using humanitarian intervention in Libya as a pretext for an all-out war that was pre-planned, even before the non-spontaneous revolt by opposition leaders. Uh, you know, as you and I both know, there really isn't, at the highest levels, an al-Qaeda that is a terrorist organization against the West. This is a black operation. This has been funded by U.S. Uh, special services and uh, uh, the dark side of American government and British intelligence for many, many years. Uh, that doesn't mean that they don't have real uh, terrorists that they use, but uh, when they give them orders, they don't know that those orders really are to provoke this kind of terrorism, this kind of revolt, in order to give the uh, globalists uh, an excuse to intervene. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Muammar Gaddafi's air defense sites and air bases have all been destroyed by cruise missiles in the first day. And now the U.S. and its allies are having trouble finding excuses to continue the attack under the same pretexts. That's why they're continuing to morph and move and reinterpret the uh, U.N. resolution, which if you read the languages, I'm sure you've covered, doesn't really limit it in, at all to a no-fly zone. And they've quickly moved beyond that. Anything that moves on the ground militarily is now a new and eager target. But air attacks alone aren't going to remove Gaddafi, who's determined to turn this into a long and protracted conflict. At some point, the U.S. is going to have to justify an invasion either directly or by surrogates, and that won't be easy to do given the mounting opposition to this trumped-up and unconstitutional war. You know, Alex, I have never seen before as much news coverage about the unconstitutional nature of this war. You know, one of the biggest finds out there was the uh, uh, clip from 2007 of Vice President Joe Biden going head-to-head -head with Chris Matthews, and he's saying, do you still stand by your position, the president, that this is an impeachable offense? You know, go to war uh, without constitutional backing of Congress. And he went on and said, yes, this is absolutely an impeachable offense, and the president has no authority whatsoever to go to war uh, under these conditions. And yet <laughs> Biden is silent about Obama doing that. Here's the very vice president silent about doing the same thing. Well, Joel, let I me don't. stop you because that's where I was going next with you. This is really two-part. The media is covering the fact that Biden said if Bush... 
without getting congressional approval, attacks Iran. I will move to impeach him. I'm a constitutional lawyer, he went on to say. Here's the facts. Now, at least Bush, with Iraq and other things that I didn't support and was unconstitutional, he at least got an open-ended resolution uh, from uh, the Congress, not a constitutional declaration of war, but now Obama, last Thursday at night, the UN resolution for force, uh, for the no-fly, for the bombardment, they come out and say you will now leave or else you will accept a humanitarian force on the ground uh, or we will attack you. And in less than 48 hours, the bombardment began. Congress wasn't even consulted. And Congress, except for Ron Paul and a few Democrats, hasn't even complained. And so the media is focusing on the unconstitutional nature via not getting congressional declaration of war. But that's even a side issue. You have the U.N. for the first time that I've seen. I mean, they've done it to a certain extent before, brazenly, nakedly, openly giving an order and the president instantly jumping to those orders. As Ron Paul said, this is a big step towards global government. I think you're right uh, in the sense that they're trying to, uh, you know, Henry Hyde, when uh, you remember the quote about him saying that the Constitution is, uh, you know, that's, we don't do that anymore. We don't declare war. He told Ron Paul when he tried to get a declaration of war in a congressional hearing about Iraq. Uh, and I think that the major powers that be in government basically said, you know, I think that we've got our congressman under control, that nobody's going to complain about this. And, uh, and they were wrong. Somebody's brought it up, and there's more than just Ron Paul complaining this time. Um, and, in fact, uh, people are bringing it up in the meetings. Uh, Jeff Flake in Arizona was confronted, uh, Republican, about, you know, why haven't you complained? Because this uh, isn't a declaration of war, and he him hawed around. In fact, it has come out that the White House gave a secret briefing to a select group of congressmen, letting them know that they were going to attack uh, Iraq, uh, but they didn't bother to say we're consulting. We want your permission. They just gave them a secret briefing, and they each, to a T, walked out of the briefing saying, "Oh, aren't I great?" Because I was part of the secret uh, meeting, and now they're embarrassed because they, in fact, did know and didn't raise the warning. Well, that's how these globalists operate. It's like the ten-member uh, continuity of government uh, governor council that Obama. Uh, has set up uh, where they can say, well, the states don't have standing now under the John Warner Defense Authorization Act, FEMA and, and, and Homeland Security is in control because we have a ceremonial, vestigial, hand-picked group of governors who speak for the other 40. And if Congress doesn't say no to this now, this will set under administrative law, that's how the globalists think, this precedent uh, where they just brief a few congressmen in secret that now the U.N. is the complete boss of America. Well, obviously, of course, there's nothing legal that makes that in force, and the people can start to rebel, and that's our purpose, Alex, is to build up a rebellion and demand that congressmen stop this and bring this issue to the fore again about a declaration of war. Um, you know, I'm covering in tomorrow's World Affairs Brief, there's several indications this was planned well in advance, as you may have known, uh, NATO General Wesley Clark inferred in an interview this week that the bombing of Libya had been on the drawing board of the Pentagon for several years. Uh, in the Financial Times, uh, uh, one of the Western sources at the uh, 28th um, uh, minister meeting in NATO on Wednesday admitted to him, what did he say? He said, NATO countries have been working for weeks to have the alliance assume effective command of the mission. Well, the mission hasn't even started. Uh, it's less than a week old, and he says, plural, they've been working for weeks to uh, about this assumption of command. Given it. And that means this was pre-planned. Of course, you covered on Infowars.com the uh, the Gates uh, supposedly sarcastic quote when uh, Petraeus uh, you know, asked him if offhandedly if they're going to invade uh, uh, Libya, and he said, yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, yet prior to his visit to Cairo, you know, Robert Gates had said that no one was in a position to predict what would happen. In Libya. He's getting less and less credible now. He seems to be a well, man out of... Well, they don't know how shotgun mics work from reporters 30 feet away. He gets off the plane and Petraeus says, wow, you're in a really big plane today. Not, you know, you know, not the you know, normal, uh, you know, smaller private or, or, or government jet. And he says, what are you getting ready to bomb Libya? And he goes, yeah, exactly. And they start laughing. And again, that was weeks before this even began. Yeah, absolutely. Um... But in any case, it's very interesting, you know, that the, uh, uh, 
as the U.S. is desperate for someone to take over this operation because, uh, you know, the Obama administration has embarrassed their core constituency, has been told for years that they will, uh, uh, you know, not do the same kind of intervention around the world that the Bush administration does. And, and frankly, the left is very upset with the Obama administration. They want cover. I mean, they, I don't believe for a minute that the U.S. isn't totally in charge of this. They simply want cover. The Europeans are balking at this, even though... Uh, half a dozen European uh, leaders, including uh, Berlusconi of uh, Italy, Sarkozy of, uh, of France, and uh, Angela Merkel, of Merkel in, uh, in Britain, are just uh, puppet globalists to the U.S. Nevertheless, they have their own constituency. This war is getting very, very unpopular in Europe, and these people are in trouble, and that's why they haven't been able to reach an agreement. The Germans are starting to pull out their, uh, their equipment, uh, two frigates and an AWACS airplane, uh, Sarkozy is still in there for the duration, so is uh, Britain. These are uh, reliable lackeys to the globalist uh, cause. But uh, it was a very interesting, uh, <laughs> you know, admission that, in fact, they were going through all this negotiation for weeks, and it was all agreed of how they were going to take over this. And all of a sudden, Sarkozy said, I'm not signing the agreement. And this was on the very day that the attack started, and it came out that French jets were attacking Libya. In other words, he didn't want any agreement. He wanted to walk out of that meeting as the hero to his country that France is leading the way with the first jet strike. Well, he's now said that. He said he wants a board run by France, not NATO. And that goes back to De Gaulle basically grabbing his nukes and kicking NATO out. Stay there. Uh, I want to come back and ask, what's the end game? Why are they doing this now? What's the strategy? Everything we said came true. Joel Skelson studying the geopolitical camps. Why are they launching destabilizations all over North Africa and the Middle East? What is the larger plan? Why is this coming now? I had originally thought, Alex, and I said so in my brief, that it looked as if that they were fomenting Islamist uh, radical uh, uh, revolutionaries such as the uh, Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. And, uh, you know, there's several other uh, wildfires going on in the Middle East, and that's still ongoing. But I thought originally this was to uh, create chaos in the Middle East with uh, Islamic fundamentalism, to give Israel an excuse to lash out, and lash out at Iran, uh, blaming Iran for this, and that they would basically end up in a, in a Middle East uh, uh, larger war. In, uh, but I'm now, I now feel that there's another agenda here. I think, uh, and this has to do with the aspect of piracy in Somalia. You know, it's always been known that they could have shut down those pirates. They could have gone in there at any time and invaded those ports, rooted them out in a week, and all the world would have cheered, and they've done nothing except play footsie with those large pirate uh, bases there in Somalia. I'm now thinking that, in fact, because... The Muslim Brotherhood has gone away now in Egypt, and the military is fully in control. And we have a military invasion getting ready to happen in Libya that the globalists are intending are going to start a march down Africa to clean out all of the, you know, justification. This is the justification to clean out all of the unstable countries down and bring peace and moderation and democracy to Africa. I think they're headed for... Um, uh, Sudan? Country, uh, the Sudan, uh, just south. Of, that's a very unstable country. And then right into Somalia. And I think that we're going to see a justification for a larger African presence that will build up this image of the U.S. romping through the world as the bully of the world. So this is the rollout of AFRICON, and we're seeing statements from AFRICON that that's exactly what's happening and that the U.S. operations are being commanded out of AFRICON. It is. It's the U.S. African Command that is running this, and they wouldn't have done that. Uh, they would have normally used the Middle Eastern Command, uh, but Petraeus, you know, essentially has been out of the block here. So this has been planned prior, probably, as uh, Wesley Clark, uh, Clark says, up to three or four years prior, that there was going to be a big African operation. And I think they used the fundamentalist Muslims to get it started, but I think we're going into a wartime. I think they're going to do to Africa what they've done to the Middle East. What about false flag? We're also seeing statements in the New York Times that, oh my gosh, Gaddafi may launch terror attacks now as a way to strike back. Could the globalists stage some attacks 
to legitimize the wider uh, invasion?